this program is about the only way of collecting meteorites in a very scientific and methodical way. You spend so much time preparing, once you get down there, you don't know whether you can do this or not. And then the first time you find a meteorite, you say, yes, I can do this. My name is Constantine Sang. I'm at Southwest Research Institute in Boulder, Colorado. I'm a planetary scientist studying planetary atmospheres. We spent a total of two months on the ice and we collected approximately 569 meteorites. The scientific expedition is called ANZMAT, short for Antarctic Search for Meteorites. It's NASA funded and what we're trying to understand is how the formation of the solar system began and how the planets evolved the way they look today. Three. Tranquility, the beauty, the awesomeness. There's no hyperbole that's too great for Antarctica. The ice is crystal blue, the snow is thick, and the sun is brilliant. When we're on the ice field, we live very basic. We live in tents with power supplied by solar panels and chipping ice for water. The reason why we go to Antarctica is because these are black rocks on a white surface, so they're much easier to find. As they go through the atmosphere, they start to burn up and they create this black fusion crust, and that's very distinct from any terrestrial rock. By studying meteorites, we're actually looking at the primordial history of the solar system. This is a direct piece of evidence how the planets evolved and formed, and how did life evolve on the Earth. No one gets to go out there except for scientists and very rich folk. So there's a huge privilege to go out and experience something that is life-changing. When you get to space, because you're in a zero-g environment, some really funky things happen to your body. Right now I'm 5'11", but in space I was six foot tall. On the ground, gravity compresses your spine. It pulls you down, the force vector going down. In space, without gravity pulling your spine down, every vertebrae has a chance to move up, which gives you your extra inch of height. After my spine elongated, when I went to bed on the first night, I felt some, some back pain, some lower back pain. And so I actually curled up to kind of alleviate that pain, to kind of stretch it out even more. A few other ways the body can change in space are, the heart gets smaller and changes shape because it's not having to pump as hard to pull the blood up from your feet because now things are just floating and working inside your body, so it's pumping easier, therefore the muscle walls actually change the shape and they get smaller. Oh. Without gravity, your bones, they change shape and they lose calcium and they become more brittle. Mm -mm. So we run on a treadmill that you strap yourself down to and you run on the treadmill to actually give loads into your bones to keep them from atrophying and losing bone density or calcium. For some people in space, your intracranial pressure changes with pushes on your eyeball, and that changes its shape, therefore requiring you to wear glasses in space, so it affects your vision. So we keep different prescriptions of glasses on board just in case someone's vision changes. Any changes in our bodies and anything that happens in space, it's worth it for the spirit of exploration. <laughs>